live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Emerald Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. As we come to you on a weekly basis from Washington, D.C. and the United States, as we're looking around the globe for those thousand best practices, the technologies, services, and products that are making a difference as we go through the 21st century. And of course, we're looking for the leaders that are making a real difference as we add two billion new people to the planet by 2050. And it may be, uh, half of that may be on the African continent. And so that's why we have our guest sitting right beside me. This is uh, Nahu Sanai uh, Garma. She is the founder and director of what's called the Association of Women in Business Ethiopia. It goes by the acronym AWIB. And welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Glad to have you here. And it's wonderful things that you're doing. And right. Ethiopia is definitely one of those countries on the African continent is really on the move. Right. Uh, it has good economic uh, growth mm -hmm. and it's changing and diversifying its economy. Right. And your part of all that is to bring more and more women into the workplace, but also into society itself right. in leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for being here and thank you. your willingness to share that. So tell us a little bit about the vision and mission of the Association of Women in Business, Ethiopia. The Association of Women in Business was uh, founded in April 2010, and uh, the vision is it's to be a catalyst for Ethiopian female leaders to come together, grow, connect. That's our vision. Yeah. And so looking at this, I know you said you were founded in 2010, but why did you want to start something like this and is this something that is from somewhere else or is it something that's totally created in Ethiopia? Well before I moved to Ethiopia I lived here for a few years and I was uh, one of the major networkers so when I went back I found out that uh, people don't have uh, this kind of platform so I thought I thought to bring this great American idea to Ethiopia but you know networking is a world phenomena. It's uh, you network, people network all around the world. So I think that's pretty much what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, Ethiopians are actually masters and mistresses <laughs> of networking because uh, we have a number of organizations that I belong to, and there are a number of Ethiopians that are actually part of that. Right. And they're just phenomenal networkers. Right, and when thank they come you. in, they so. uh, show up and they start shaking hands at the beginning and they keep doing so but, till well, but they we leave the room. We, we feel we are shy people, but I guess if you have difference of opinion, I like that. Well, no, <laughs> they're definitely not shy. It doesn't mean that uh, some are not quiet, but that doesn't mean that they're actually shy either. So, good, yes. But anyway, why is the AWIB really needed in Ethiopia? And indeed, why is it needed really around the world? Mm. And because you're now actually introducing it to the United States right, as well. Right, I'm doing that. A womb is primarily to empower women. So the idea, our idea is an empowered woman is a free woman to dream and to make her dream a reality. So if we are empowered, we can do our own agendas and mm -hmm. we can participate and we can make differences in our own lives. So that is pretty much what and why it is needed in Ethiopia. Yeah, and then around the world. Around the world, yeah, what's the, And what would be the difference between what you see as far as Ethiopia is concerned and other countries that you're interested in introducing this concept? Well, some are more developed. Uh, obviously, they've been at it for a long time. You know, networking, as we said before, is the world phenomenon, but the thing is some are organized and they've been at it for quite some time. So in Ethiopia, we're just starting. And um, most of you know the economy is not that developed. It is developing, but not that developed. So mm -hmm. as a result, lots of things are inefficient and probably at a at primitive stage. So people don't have much time to go out and network. So we created this platform so that they can come out and emerge, connect, and grow together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed in all the literature you have, you have about members, you have about audiences, so you're mixing those two together. So what are the targeted members and audiences uh, that you have, and why did you select those? 
Well, the audiences probably they select themselves, I can say, but um, the AWOB phenomena is to really know yourself, to reflect on yourself, to want to develop yourself professionally as, as well as personally. So what we do is when, I think you can see the, the mission or the objective selected those people or they saw the, the objectives and they, they came. There's a little bit of uh, investment economically as well. So naturally, those are the people who would like to develop their business. Naturally, those people who are in the corporate world and naturally those people who are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much all. Now, in some countries, uh, entrepreneurship is just part of the, almost the DNA. It's in the water and all that. Now, do you have that same phenomena in Ethiopia? If yes, why do you think so? If not, how are you bringing that to Ethiopians? We do have entrepreneurship, yes. And actually, they say in developed countries, like in developed countries about 90% of the people are employed in developing countries. About 90% of the people have their own, their own um, businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's, they aspire to that because things are not very effective and efficient and there is the hier hierarchical situation in developing countries. So everybody wants, so those people would like to be their own bosses, you might say, but we cannot but we cannot, um, but we have to do it in a very organized manner. We have to really educate ourselves what we're get, getting into because if you want to be successful in business, you have to really develop yourself. And the AOA phenomena is really developing leaders, leaders that could serve from classroom, as we say, to boardroom. Mm -hmm. Classroom to boardroom and also too, are you really focused on uh, civil society, the right. economy, the yeah. environment, all these right. things are all mixed together. Right. And when you're looking at the economy and society, how do these three things fit together? The economy, the environment, and lo local community development. Yeah, I, I think they're one and the same because if you develop your economy, you cannot be without the community, cannot be with the, the social system. So you really have to, they're interrelated. And in, with, with AWO, what we do is every year we have what we call Women of Excellence that we celebrate those achievers in business mm -hmm. and otherwise, and most of them are community leaders. So we go by what they have been doing for the environment, what they have been doing for Ethiopia, what they have been doing for themselves above, mm -hmm. above all. So um, that's, that's how we put it together and that's how we preach it. In, in AWO, we say we don't teach or we don't train leadership, but we live it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the whole thing about uh, actually going in and really uh, sharing it in, in a real way. And I noticed that the meetings that I attended with you and uh, with your group, you were actually doing that here in Washington, D.C. Right, right. You were actually living it and showing people exactly how right, to do right, all that. Right. So when you're in those types of meetings, how do you, the networking part of that, that's very clear, but how do you go beyond just, well, we're giving a seminar, we're giving, you know, having demonstrations right, right. so that when people leave there, they're excited, they want to be engaged, they want to be involved, and they want to go back to their home, back to their community, mm -hmm. and actually do something that's maybe not been done before or something that's very positive. Well, we've been coming here for, this is our third year, and this is to uh, for awareness creation, but what we really would like to promote is what does the diaspora have at stake back mm -hmm. home? So we want to give them something tangible, and that is we want to develop, and we're developing the, uh, the AWOB internship program. What that is, is we select, we go to college students, and we select those who are bright students, at least GPA 3 plus, uh, uh, 3 plus O, and then we bring them, and then we develop them. We, we, what we do is we develop them, we mentor them, mm -hmm. and then we ask for the diasporas or any of them uh, around the world to sponsor the kids so that they could go through our programs. You know, we pay for our programs and we want to start from the young ones. We say, let's develop leaders, but where do you start? You have to start from the young ones so they cannot economically afford it and we bring that. So what do the diaspora have or the sponsors mm -hmm. have in this? they actually get to mentor 
and develop a leader. And I say Africa's challenge is leadership. Mm -hmm. And then you contribute from this, from wherever you are, you contribute to the development of Africa one leader at a time. That's yeah, what that's we say. That's fantastic. And the more of those that you have, define the term diaspora. It's used, it's, it's in the media, it's everywhere. <laughs> But you know, most people say diaspora, that's, yeah. you know, what kind of uh, word is that? Uh, yeah. What is the meaning? Well, I, I guess it's becoming popular the past 20 years maybe, but I was introduced to this term a long time ago actually in this country. And I think it came from, from the, the Jewish community. You know, they, they, they left their country and they were dispersed all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that's where the diaspora came. So that means you're dispersed, you know, this dispersed right. people. So they come together for the common good of hopefully for their country back home. Mm -hmm. Now it, everybody says diaspora, you know, people, some people don't like it, some people like it, some people use it, some people don't, so I guess That's why I was asking you to <laughs> define it because, you know, many people were confused about exactly what is the diaspora and uh, many people are still trying to figure out how to spell it, so uh, that's <laughs> good job on that. Right. But looking at the internship program, how do you select, I know the 3.0, mm -hmm. those types of things, what yes. age? Do they apply? Do uh, the the schools themselves mm -hmm. actually submit for right. the students, or they apply directly? Right. How does all that process work? What we do is first we start from the sponsors, so we see how much fund we have, mm -hmm. and then it takes about three hundred dollars per student to go through our program, mm -hmm. and that doesn't even uh, is that one year for one year. For one it year. doesn't okay. in, it doesn't even include the administration. So what we do is depending on our funding. We go directly to the colleges and ask the dean, or usually we go to this gender specialist, I think, and we, we go to the administrator and we ask them, this is what we would like to do, and you give us those with potentials. You know, people, students can be bright, but they probably don't aspire to be leaders. Not everybody aspires to be leaders. So we want, we have specific things that we're looking for, so we give it to them, and in collaboration, we pick those kids, so they come, Mm -hmm. We interview them, and then we have them sign a contract saying that this is what we give you and this is what you have to deliver, and it's very strict. They come through our program all the time. They have to participate, and then they work with us. That's so. absolutely fantastic. And uh, so when they finish, why do they want to be an intern? And I have one last oh, question. Oh, they want to be an intern because we have been, AWOP has been known for very much for its development of people. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if they go through our program, they really, really open their eyes and the, the employers know what they're looking for if they come to AWOP. This is Nahu Verma. She's a founder director of Association of Women in Business. Thank you as we create the Emerald Planet.